whenever we're all gathering, we're doing a, a potluck, I'm just going to give money. I'm going to give $250. Right? So he's doing something not for the sake of zakat. The intention isn't zakat. Therefore, can he later on say, oh, we'll just consider that as zakat? No, you can't. Because now he did the action for a customary reason or a non-zakat purpose. Right? So it differentiates between different, a different actions of worship and between acts of worship and customary acts. Another example. Someone wants to pray sunnah. He prays four rakah sunnah. Just nafila for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? What was his intention? A nafila. Simply an act of worship. Can he, after that, say, oh, I'm just going to count that as duhur? No. So now we, the, the intention differentiates between different acts of worship, between charity and zakah, between a sunnah prayer and a obligatory prayer, and so on, between a sunnah fasting and a Ramadan, or fasting for Ramadan. That's one purpose of, uh, of the intention. It differentiates between acts of worship and between customary acts and acts of worship between each other. Make sense? The second purpose of the intention is to differentiate between acts that are done for the sake of Allah and acts that are done for other than the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Someone might give money for a political cause. There's political reason behind it. Right? There's a beneficial reason for a purpose behind it. And this is a very common in people who want you know, certain <coughs> positions and whatnot. Someone gives money to a organization uh, hoping to get a position with them later on in election season. Now this person gave for the, act, for the sake of what? For a worldly gain. Fine. But when one wants to get ajil, they want reward, they need to give for a for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm giving charity to this poor person because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them. And I want my reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? I'm, I'm praying this prayer between these people to teach them that this is how you pray for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I can get reward in their prayer when they pray the same way I do because I taught them now I take reward when they perform that so on and so forth so two purposes for intention number one differenti differentiating between acts of worship and customary acts and number two differentiating between that which is for the sake of Allah and that which isn't for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, there are many issues that revolve around the intention and some people they go a little bit extreme when it comes to intention or they don't it confuses them and they become a little bit paranoid right so the intention is very simple if you understand that everything you do there is a reason behind it then you know when you go make wudu you're doing it for a reason whether you you know, in your heart or in your mind, say, I'm going to do wudu to pray, right? Or I'm going to do wudu for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless if you acknowledge that in your mind or you tell that to yourself in your mind, you're going to make wudu for a reason. Now, no one's going to go do wudu for a non sharia or a non uh, religious reason. Someone can go just wash their hands three times and then wash their mouth and nose and wash their face three times and wash their arms three times and so on, etc. <laughs> for no reason or for a say or for a reason other than salah no one's going to do that it's not even it's not part of our customs to do something like that someone's going to you know do some sort of a cleaning of the body they go take a shower they don't do these specific acts so intention is very simple everyone does something for a reason you don't have to recognize that reason acknowledge it in your mind in order for it to be an act of worship does it make sense very technical, okay? <clears throat> so someone goes and does wudu, he's doing it for the sake of Salah. So don't become a little bit paranoid or over paranoid, did I do it for the sake of Allah or not? When you stand up and pray, you're praying for a reason, right? You're praying for a reason, you're not praying for no reason. No one can stand up and start doing these acts for absolutely no reason. So intention is very simple, don't over complicate it. <clears throat> Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I have uh, one time, Mama Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I saw him sleep, 
that you were walking in the Jannah right. because of that. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Is that, yes, that it's, correct. Part? it's correct. Uh, it is a, uh, something recommended for someone to always be in the same wudu throughout the day. If he uses, if he, you know, breaks his wudu for whatever reason, he goes and performs wudu. And now he's always on a state of purification. Yes, that's that's a recommended act. So the brother asked uh, Bilal radiallahu uh, the Prophet saw him in paradise walking around. So he asked Bilal, what, what do you do? How, what got you to paradise? And he said that I don't break my wudu except that I renew it. Meaning is it constantly in a state or in the state of ablution throughout the day. So the brother asked if that's a uh, sunnah or not. And that's something that's correct. And the answer is yes, it's something that's correct. That hadith uh, is a correct hadith. And that it is recommended for one to be in a constant state of wudu. However, however, if that's going to lead you to constantly holding in, you know, gases and whatnot, preventing you from using the bathroom because you don't want to go and make wudu again, or you can't, or it's hard, then don't do that because you're going to harm your body. However, if it's easy for you, you're in your house, you know, as soon as you break your wudu, you can go and renew it or why not, the, the, the situation makes it easy for you, then go for it. But don't harm your body for the sake. Because I remember when I was younger, I used to always try to be on wudu. And that I found myself, you know, actually hurting my body in ways. So be careful of that. You have a question? Any other questions? So now, where does one make intention? Where is the place of intention? The place of intention is the heart. Meaning, if someone in their heart or in their mind says, I am doing this for the sake of Allah, that's enough. They don't need to verbally say it. Say, oh, I am praying the uh, prayer, verbally. They don't need to verbally say, I am making wudu for Salah. Right? So long as their heart is doing it for, the, for that purpose, then that's accepted and that's more than enough. Okay? Number two, the... How or what does one say or how does one make intention? Uh, simply by saying, my intention is this. That's it. You go into prayer, you say my intention is Madhra prayer. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Now, my intention is Madhra prayer for the sake of Allah with the jama'ah behind so and so. Uh, at this time exactly, and uh, the idan has been made and the iqamah was given and so on and so forth. Very simple. I made intention to pray mother to pray mother prayer to pray Aisha to fast Ramadan so on and so forth now when does one make intention they make intention before the action itself right before it immediately one's going to make wudu right before he he says bismillah right before he says uh, what you call it and he starts washing his hands wudu I make intention for wudu that's it now if one uh, if one doubts their intention during the act of worship, you're making ablution, now you, you don't know whether you made intention or not. Again, this goes back to what we said before, that you're, going, you're doing ablution for what reason? Ask yourself, why am I doing ablution right now? Once you start doubting your intention, immediately ask yourself, why am I doing this? If your answer is, I'm making ablution to pray, then that's your intention. Okay. If you're making praying salah, why am I praying? Because right now Maghrib prayer is obligatory. That's enough. Cut your paranoia from there. Don't allow it to wander. Because the shaitan takes advantage of that and tries to distract you. Now, some people, let's say someone paralyzed. He can't perform wudu by himself. He needs someone else to do wudu for him. Is this allowed? It's allowed. Meaning, if I'm sitting here, even if you're not, you're not sick or anything, someone comes and performs wudu for you. Is this allowed? It's allowed, and it's accepted. Okay. However, if one that happens, the intention is on whom? Is it on the person who's receiving the action or the one doing it? Meaning, me, who is now someone's doing wudu for me, washing my uh, my arms and my feet and my face and so on. Is it me who needs to do the intention or the person performing that for me? It's me, myself. Okay, I'm the one who says I'm making wudu. Okay, now what does one uh, intend? 
specifically perform a loop. Now, why do we perform a loop? Because we are in a state of what? Of impurity, spiritually, right? Not, not necessarily physically. One says, I give you the intention of raising this state of impurity purification. Or I'm making intention to make Salah permissible for me. Because in order for Salah to be performing Salah to be permissible, you need to what? Be in a state of ablution. So that's the first uh, obligatory act of wudu, intention. An intention is an act, uh, an obligatory uh, act for every act of worship. Uh, any questions on intention? I hope it's, I hope it's clear. No? Good. So the ayah continues, إِذَا قُمْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ فَانْصِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Wash your face. Now, let's stop right now at the word wash. What does that mean? The last, that is last uh, session, I spoke about how scholars derive meanings from words. <coughs> and that words take their scientific meaning, the meaning in which the, the shara gave it first. Right? So when you hear the word Salah, or you read the word Salah in the Quran or the Sunnah, it means what? The five prayers. Because the Sharia gave it that meaning. Therefore, we hold it based on that meaning. For example, you open a book of biology. Right? Take, give me a word. Uh, a word, I don't know, I'm not a biology man, it's a bad choice. But let's think of something. Um, let's take engineering, for example, or mathematics. Infinity. Now, infinity, the word infinity in math has certain meanings, right? It might be a little bit more specific or more general than the linguistic meaning. Anyone else, you know, in, in, in a normal conversation, when they say infinity, it'll have a, a sort of different meaning. Now, when you open a book of math and you see the word infinity, you understand that based on which meaning? The mathematical meaning or the generic meaning? The mathematical. That's how it is. Because now you're talking math. Likewise, the Quran. When you say Salah, you're talking about Salah of Islam. You're not talking about the linguistic one. So we hold it to the scientific meaning. First, if there is no scientific meaning or there is a reason or evidence not to hold it at its uh, scientific meaning, we go to which meaning? The linguistic meaning. Alright? So the word Rusul, the Sharia, the Quran and Sunnah didn't define it. <clears throat> it didn't give it a definition, meaning when you do Rusul over the face, or you do also uh, during wudu, what does it mean? The Sharia didn't specify. Therefore, we hold it to what meaning? The linguistic meaning. And the word ghusl in Arabic means what? Sayalan or qataran al ma. Meaning that my, water is dropping or dripping or kind of flowing. That's what ghusl means. Therefore, when someone wets their hand, right, and they hold their hand up like this, what starts happening? Water starts dropping, right? That's what's Whereas if I would take a little bit of water on my hand, go like this, right? What's going to happen? Is the water going to drip? No. That's what? Wiping. As we can get to for the, the head. So in order to, uh, to perform ghusl of these, uh, these uh, acts of wudu, what needs to be happen? Water needs to be enough that it starts dripping. Okay? Now, in order to perform also, do you necessarily need to use your hand and wash, wipe it like this? In order for that also linguistically to apply? Or can you, for example, put your hand in a bucket, pull it, push, pull it up, what, is that enough? Hold it to the linguistic meaning. If you go like this, if you put your hand in the bucket and you pull it out, what's going to happen to the water? It's going to drip. Therefore, it what? It qualifies, right? Linguistically, it qualifies. It's not, it's not, uh, what you call it? It's not, it's not conditioned to actually wiping it yourself. Therefore, if you were for all apps will do, just put your hand under a, a faucet and just kind of go like this and this and put your face and put your feet without wiping or actually using your hand. So long as the water is dripping, you have performed wudu. Does this make sense? Because why? Also, it means dripping, the dripping of water. 
Arabic. It's how, so what it means in Arabic, therefore, if water is dripping, then what? You have performed the act of ghusl. Okay? Uh, the wajh, the face. This is the face. We all have one. Right? Now the scholars said what exactly is the face? What are the borders of the face? The borders of the face is what? From where the hair starts growing normally, right? So from here to what? So under the chin. This is the face. And that's in terms of uh, uh, height, in terms of width, from the start of the ear, right, to the other start of the ear. This is in terms of width. Therefore, like this. And that's the face. Therefore, water must reach all these corners and all in between. From where the hair starts to what? Under the chin. From the start of the right ear to the start of the left ear. And all in between. Now, some of us are bald. Where does the hair start? Estimate. Normally, it'll start around here, right? The beginning or the top of the forehead. Once it starts curving, that's where the <coughs> hair normally starts. Start from there, if you're bald. You don't have to you know, do your entire head. There's another action for washing the head. That's the face. فَلْصِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ And wash your hands to the what? The elbows. The hand is what? From here, the start of the fingers, to what? The elbows. Are the elbows included? They're included. Right? So you're going to wash and tie your arm to right above the elbows. Right? Here's my elbow, right above it. This is the hand, <coughs> as is defined in this uh, verse, because it says, إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ To the elbows. Right? Both hands. And wipe your head. Your head is what? Starts from where the hair starts, all the way down to where the hair ends. Back. That's your head. And what does it say? Did it say wusud or wipe? It said wipe. Meaning it's different. Wiping doesn't, that doesn't mean, now it doesn't mean that water needs to drip from your head. It means you simply need to wipe. Now the, the, the sharia or the the Quran or Sunnah define the word white? No. Therefore, we hold it to its linguistic meaning. Anything that is a, the wiping action fulfills this uh, condition, or fulfills this act of the wudu. Meaning, if I were to take a piece of paper, uh, put water on it, or you know, put it in a bucket of water, now it's wet, go like this, did I wipe my head? I wipe my head. If I take a, a towel and do that, a wet towel, and wipe my head with it, did I wipe my head? I wipe my head. Because the Quran didn't say wipe your head with your hand. It just said wipe your head. So whatever uh, dictates the wiping, then it is fulfilled. Likewise, a piece of wood. You put wood in water and you wipe your head. I don't recommend it because you get blisters, but that fulfills the, this action of wudu. And the head again is from where? The start. Pretty much the hair. The Prophet used to do like this. Look. Like this. Start from the, the front of the head, go all the way back, and then go back up. <coughs> like that. Therefore, if you have longer hair, you know, that which goes beyond the head, you don't need to wipe it. Okay? So, women, all the way up to here, that's it. The start of the neck. You don't need to go beyond that. Uh, and your feet to what? The ankles. The ankles are these two, this bone that pops out on the same side. Okay? So you wash to right above it. I don't want to put my foot up because it's a little bit impolite, but you guys I'm sure know what an ankle is. Right? So right above the ankle, you wash till there. All that's under, all that's above, and left and right above the ankle. Right above the ankle. That's the the uh, washing of the, uh, the washing of the foot, right? Those foot. Now those are four plus intention. That makes five. Now there are two more. Uh, the first one is doing these acts in order. How do we get this condition? Look at the language of, the, of this verse. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Wash." 
your faces, wash your arms, wipe your, your uh, head, wash your feet. Now in the Arabic language, Hmm? Wipe your feet, wipe your uh, head, wash. Now I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to that. So that's where we get the. Uh, that's where we derive the meat. The doing in order. Now in the Arabic language, when you want to put a list of something, you give this, those words the same exact harakat, uh, the vowel, at the end of the word, right? So technically speaking, this verse should read. فَأَغْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ وَأَيْدِيَكُمْ إِلَى الْمَرَافِقِ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ وَامْسَحُوا بِرُوسِكُمْ Because now the wash, wipe your head, has a different vowel, ending vowel, than washing your feet, right? So why did Allah SWT list it in order so that it's more uh, smooth <laughs> linguistically uh, when you speak? But Allah SWT put this different vowel in between, right? The scholar said so that it gives us the meaning of you need to do it in order. Because there is no reason of putting this in between, this one that's different, in between those that are similar. Except for that reason. Okay? This is very linguistic. If you don't know Arabic, you're not gonna, it's kind of going to go over your head. But that's where they get it from. Alright? So now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this verse, the last two, the wiping of the feet, or the wiping of the head, the washing of the feet, have two different ending harakat, ending vowels, right? The, la the latter, washing of the feet, matches what the first two. Therefore, it takes their vowel, not the vowel of the one before, wiping of the feet. Does this make sense? If you understand Arabic, it should kind of come, if you remember Nahu back when you were in grade school. If not, then uh, maybe we'll explain it in another way, but very technically, you need to understand Arabic to, re to recognize this. All right, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the, the linguistic order to give this meaning, that there is, you need to do it, you need to perform it in order, okay? It might not make a little sense to everyone, but that's because it's, it goes back to the Arabic uh, grammar. However, doing it in order is a condition of uh, performing wudu. Likewise, the Prophet didn't make wudu except in order, in this order. We have no narrations that the Prophet ﷺ changed the order of wudu. And we take this uh, condition, this, this obligation, from that as well. Okay? And uh, I'll leave, there's one more. I'll leave it for the next steps. Uh, if there's any questions, really quickly, we'll take one or two. Go ahead. Yeah, it's fine. He asked if it's permissible to spit while uh, performing wudu, and that's fine, so long as you don't spit on someone else. Speak, speak, speak. speak. Oh, speak, yeah. <laughs> Speaking is fine too. It's fine too, there's nothing against it. How about uh, wiping your uh, feet over your socks? Over your socks, that's the next unit that's coming up, inshallah, because there's a lot of conditions. It's permissible, it's part of Islam, but there are conditions that need to be met before, and there is uh, a different way, and we'll explain, inshallah, more about it. Because uh, there's not really much time now. Any other questions? Go ahead. Prophet Muhammad, uh, he did wash three times also two times. Yes, we explained that in uh, the previous session. We talked about the uh, uh, the prefer preferred acts of wudu, not the obligatory ones. We mentioned that doing it three times is the preferred action. Doing it once is enough. Thank you. Anything else? If anyone has any questions, they can ask me after prayer. I'm available for that.